Happy Star Wars Day everyone! Listen, before we get to talk about Star Wars, I need to nick someone's gimmick and talk tropes. Get that sneaky snitch on, because we're going to talk about a trope of a character type I love. The little guy. This technically isn't an official trope, but a series of tropes that are related to the same character type. They're just little guys, just silly guys, little goobers. You could just pick them up and hold them up to a supermarket camera. Not every little guy fits this trope, however. It can be small, but not a silly guy. But you can be a silly guy, but you're just actually just dumb of ass, pure of heart. This type of character can fit into many types of tropes, like the adorable evil minion, the pint-sized powerhouse, or the token moi. And it doesn't even have to be a, like, a male character. A guy is just a concept. You can just be one of the guys. Like Anya from Spy X Family falls into this I mean. Not only is she small, but her serious attempts to be able to help her father and mother without them knowing is often seen as almost childlike, just them being silly for their age. Often most of these silly little guys are younger coded, but some do use this as their advantage to be able to trick or deceive. Even my channel mascot is a silly little guy. Say hi Briar. Yes, I'm indeed a silly little guy, but you know what is more silly? That, in 1998, The Undertaker threw mankind off hell in a cell, and plummeted 16 feet through an announcer's table. Most often, these guys are seen as the comic relief or a mascot of the series, but you just don't want to write them off as they are just as strong as the rest of them. Chopper from One Piece fits this love of this character type to a T. Tony Tony Chopper is a reindeer from Drum Island made sentient after eating a human human fruit and has one of the best theme songs of all time. <laughs> Chopper is often seen by people on the outside as the pet of the crew, but is actually a highly skilled doctor and Smanny supports the Straw Hats as that's where he feels like he belongs. He was rejected by his reindeer family because he had a blue nose, while after he ate the devil fruit, he was seen as a monster by everyone but his only mentor. Dr. Herlock, who he learned everything from. I've only just finished Sky Island after starting last year. As soon as I saw Chopper and met them, I knew, I, 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 he is the best, I love him. Oh yeah, he's also got cool antlers like me, so that's, that's also cool. Some people do take the time to grow into a little guy. Let's take Stabby from Centaur World. This one's a warrior, a threatening lizard folk of the Minotaur army, and while in the fight in the in-between was stabbed by Ryder. They were kidnapped and later adopted by Durpleton, carrying them around, but something Something began to change. For those not all aware, Centaur World of the World uses the trope of the Fisher Kingdom. The longer you're in an area, the more it influences you and changes you. One showcase of this is in Disney Pixar's Coco. Miguel heads to the land of dead as he slowly becomes a skeleton. The only thing being that he must leave before sunrise or he'll be trapped in the land of the dead forever, never being able to return to the land of the living. The Fisher Kingdom trope isn't always a negative. Sometimes people go to worlds where their abilities change to fit into that concept of their world. Like a western superhero entering more of an anime world. Stabby is very influenced by this and becomes this little lad. He's just the son we all love and his real name is Philip J. Bonecrunch and he's actually 43. Even though he's small, he's still able to hold himself in a fight just like he did before and he's of course voiced by D. Bradley Baker who's played so many people that I could just ramble on and on and make this video even longer but that would just go into a whole other rabbit hole. It was Perry the Platypus, number four in Candy and, and all the clone troopers in the Star Wars CGI animated series. See? There's the connection to Star Wars. We may talk about more silly guys in the future, but this video is about Star Wars, focusing on Galaxy's Edge, where we have one of the greatest additions to a theme park of all time. These guys. These are the BDX droids. Little guys who've just captured my heart. The official lore is the, these guys are newly created droids, designed for exploration. However, they're being a bit of a ship of Theseus created droids, as they're not new but old but old but new. They're made by using other droid parts, so they're a little temperamental so you won't be able to touch them and because you have to keep their distance. So they're constantly scanning to get information about Black Spire outpost, so they're like tourists, just like just like the guests of the park, they're our tourists to the outposts. We only have two confirmed names of them at this time, being BD Grick 
the green one a beady besh, the blue one, while the white one hasn't been appearing much. Some compared these droids to look like ducklings, so their trio was nicknamed by fanbase Huey, Louie and Jew. But Matt Martin, Locust Story Group member, confirmed the same joke was actually made internally. They can express motions by head movements, crouching up and down, two wiggly antennae, and just using their little legs to make like big leaps. This is actually not the first time we've seen this type of droid in the Star Wars series, however. The BD droid has appeared in one place before. BD-1 is the companion of Cal Ketsis, appearing first in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. The BDX droid's history is a quite the quick one, as they were revealed as a prototype at a keynote presentation at 2023 IEE slash RSJ's International Conference on Intelligent Robots and Systems. This is the time where we only knew them under the name of Duckling Droids. Then they just randomly brought these guys out one day at Disneyland California on November of 2023 for a bit of a field test. Then it was revealed they will return once again on the 5th of April to the 2nd of June for the 2024 Season of the Force celebration. And all I'm gonna say is look at them. I love these. I I don't know, as soon as I saw these guys, I just fell in love. There's nothing more that like I can say apart from like look. The design is just immaculate. It gives that idea of it's childlike but not. Again, like I opened with, it fits this silly little guy concept to a T and nothing proves that more than these ducklings manage to actually interact with actual ducklings. Wait, wait. Oh, 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 ducklings. <laughs> this is actually really good because we're just getting to know humans and now uh, I guess we're going to get to know ducks. Anyway, so this video is just going to be me gushing about how I love these little guys and how I'm actually a bit sad I'm never going to be able to see them. Is For me, going to California is going to be very unlikely. You know that Spongebob image where it's just uh, Mr. Krabs on one side and uh, Spongebob on the other? That's like me and these lads. I do want to see these in person. I really wish I can, but sadly, the park where I usually go to, it's technically, it was technically the most accessible for me, doesn't have these characters. It does have Mando and the Child, but no droids. So no BDX, there's no way they'll bring Chopper here as a permanent walk around character. Because yesterday on May the 4th, they basically put him in a store, kept him in one place. But I think that's for a reason. Not for any like contracts or safety or they don't want him walking about, no no no. Because Chopper's on a no-fly list and is only allowed to be there for one day. If you don't know why, let me just say one thing. 50,015. Happy Star Wars Day! Ooh.